Hello and welcome to another Q&A here on Steven Vlog. Today, the month of September. Is it? I mean, it's it's the one that's for September. Okay. That's how, actually some of the month stuff is, is weird because the video for the Q&A is the month like leading into it. So like this is at the beginning of September and it's for September, it's called September. But then the mail videos come out later and that's confusing. Patreon is the same way. They come out like after the month has ended and it's all screwed up and it's weird, but people get videos and I think it's all that matters. So we've got some questions. And the first one of the questions is from uh, Ramus Nayana or Niani. Uh, what's your opinion of the Panasonic Lumix GH4? It's a good camera. <laughs> do you like it? I do like it. Um, it is the camera this video is filmed with. Yes. Uh, Ramus uh, basically said that they were in, I think they were in school and um, they were thinking about getting this camera, uh, the camera that we are using to film now, the camera that we use for all the Q&As and mail, mail as of as of late, as of this year, mm -hmm. I think as of 2016. Um, I love the camera. I mean, I absolutely adore it. And it's been a while since I've looked at cameras, but um, at least when we bought it, there was nothing close to this camera. It is a 4K DSLR and one of the other selling points it's kind of it's kind of a big deal because there aren't a lot of DSLRs that do this is that it will film uninterrupted that is a big thing like you don't have to buy a DSLR and an HDMI recorder you can just buy the DSLR and it will record for as long as the card goes right now we have a 128 gig um, card in there and it'll record for near as a hair three hours in 4k and that's great because whenever Mal's doing Mal make, she needs something that's going to be able to record for all of that length of time. On the older, um, the older camera that we used was the T2i, the Canon T2i, and that had a limit of like ten minutes, fifteen minutes, ten or fifteen minutes, something, something like, like that, that, and then it would just stop. Um, I think it was limited by the right speed. No, I think it was limited no. by the FAT system, and I think it was making yeah, a, a four gig file and then stopping or something like that, and this one does not do that. It keeps going. It makes multiple files, so yeah. The GH4 is a fantastic camera. For the price, it's very hard to beat, and I would wholeheartedly recommend it to, uh, to anyone. Uh, the next question is from Show Me Your Kitties. <laughs> it's funny. Uh, what was the most challenging Malmakes painting to create, and which painting are you most proud of? I might answer this with the same painting. I mean, they're they kind of, yeah, I could see how you could get yeah. similar results. Um, okay. So what was the most challenging? Okay, maybe it wasn't the challenging. It was challenging because okay. I did it twice. Okay, before you answer, let me try and think of what the most challenging one was. Because you've done a bunch. <laughs> There's been many that have been challenging. Okay, I have one, I have one really good answer. Hmm. And I'm trying to think of another one because you may not think of that answer. You may think of a more realistic answer. I think I know which one's more challenging. And I know which one I'm most proud of. Okay. What, what do you think? I think most challenging would be Emerald Hill. Okay. Because that... there was a lot of problems I was having. Yeah. With okay. like the blocks and stuff. Yeah, Emerald Hill was... Um, Emerald Hill there was, was... a lot to it. The Emerald Hill took you... The most amount of time. Yeah, it was a lot I of think. painting. Um, Emerald Hill took an obscene amount of time to, to create um, because there's so many little intricate things that went into it. And there it. was a lot of layers with the sky and the clouds and the ocean and that the was, grass and the foreground. That was one I wasn't thinking of, but yeah, that that one took a long time. And that one went so good, so good. It's one of my favorites. Um, that's what you have currently said as your channel trailer. Yeah. Just because I think it shows off your abilities really well. But um, well, the one I was thinking of for challenging was um, uh, Journey. I mean, the actual Journey one. The one that came out was the not. The one that it's came just, out was not so bad. Mal was working on a completely different Journey painting. We've talked about this, I yeah. believe, before. But Mal was working on a completely different Journey-based painting, a completely different scene, and got pretty far into it before she decided that it was just not working and not what she wanted, and it was not up to her level of acceptance. You know, it wasn't. It would. It, it, it's not that. I mean, you are a bit of a perfectionist, but it's not that it had to be absolutely perfect. But there was a certain mark that you needed to hit personally, and you hadn't yes. hit it, and that was affecting your 
acceptance of that painting and mm -hmm. you're like, I can't release this, I've got to go in a different direction. But luck luckily Journey was a very diverse game and um, even before you started painting it, you had multiple ideas. Mm -hmm. So you moved to a different idea and honestly it came out way better than the first one ever would have. Like it was, it's just so stunning. It's and one I of think my... that's why that is the one I'm most proud of. Oh really? Mm -hmm. The Journey one is beautiful. I'm I mean, also proud of the Pokemon Go one. Yeah, yeah. Because I did it, and I, I was surprised at myself with the waves. With the waves and mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, Journey, Journey is is one of my favorites. Sun, Sunset Shore, the 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 Donkey Kong Country one, uh, Donkey Kong Country Returns one is is also a, a personal favorite. But um, the one you just released, Star Hill, is fantastic. I know Real. you like that one. I love that. I'm a big fan of Super Mario RPG, so I like that one. And also Earthbound, because it was such a radical departure from what the game is. It was a <laughs> 3D thing. I like all your stuff. I'm a, I'm a big fan. Um, next question is from Nerd Writer Fighter. Mal, do you still have some of the flexibility that you had as a dancer, and can you still do any dance moves? I think I'm still pretty flexible. I'm sure if I worked at it for like two weeks, I could get the splits back. Are you that flexible? Still? I think so. Really? Yeah. Okay. It's and I'm not trying to knock you. I'm just like, you don't stretch. No. I'm not the reason boy. I know is because I live with you and I'm around you, especially now, all the time. Um, like you don't stretch. I don't stretch. There was a time where I was in gymnastics. I mean, I took karate for many, many years. And then I was in gymnastics, and throughout all that time, I was extremely flexible. Um, like I could put my my legs behind my head and walk on my hands type crap. Uh, I can't do that now. What I used to do is I used to like sit crisscross applesauce, but instead of my feet under my legs, I'd put them like on top of my thighs. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's and a, then I would walk on that, my knees. Is that lotus? Is that full lotus? Yeah, and then full I would lotus. walk on my knees. I'd, I've like, done that, yeah. Stand up on the, yeah. You know, just because we're older <laughs> doesn't mean we can't Reachieve that flexibility. You just have to work towards it. It could be something interesting to try. You know, it might make us feel better because there's a lot. I mean, I sit a lot. Yeah. You know, and especially yeah, you now even mm -hmm. more than ever sit a lot. So maybe it would be in our best interest to do some more some yoga Lindsay stretches has and things a pass like that. To the workout center here that we don't have a pass for. So I don't. Yeah, maybe. I mean, maybe. Lindsay we're, also does yoga. We could go do yoga with Lindsay. I mean, we're very busy, but like. <laughs> Yeah. Maybe at some point we'll start doing some stretches and stuff and try and get back some of that flexibility. As for the dance moves, I mean, I haven't forgotten anything from ballet. But it was ballet. It wasn't like... I mean... Cool dancing. You s Occasionally I will find Mal dancing in the kitchen. Maybe that's why the lady downstairs doesn't like us. <laughs> she just likes the cats. Yeah. And she... I'm sorry. She will have to get over it. They are cats. They have issues where they need to play. Uh, the next question is from Sniz77. Sniz. Is that the, the name of a character from, like, Kablam or something? It's just something about that. I was thinking Dr. Seuss. Like, mm. Yeah, that's probably right. Anyway. anyway. Um, has creating Malmakes gotten easier with time? Is have this, there Sorry, is this a Mal q &A? You picked out these <laughs> these few questions, and you put them in this order, and I decided not to change them. Okay. Anyway, continue with Sniz's question. <laughs> Sorry, it's just funny because you act surprised, and I'm like, you're the one that picked out these questions. Um, anyway, has creating Malmakes gotten easier with time? Uh, have there been any changes made to your process, either with planning, painting, or editing, that made it easier to produce videos? Um... It was early on, like in the second or third video, I was editing and Steven's like, you know, you don't have to watch that in real time, right? He's like, you can just scrub through and find where you stop painting. Because I was doing the time lapse mm -hmm. and I was sitting there watching all of my footage in real time and going through and being like, painting, 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 stop, okay, cut that, painting, painting. And you were like, you can just scrub. That saved a lot of time. It wouldn't have been the second one. I edited the second one. I edited the first two. So maybe it was like three or four. But the third, yeah, the third or fourth one. Yeah, I mean, there's been, it's, I did my absolute best to teach you everything I could teach you. But there's stuff, there's some stuff that just, it doesn't occur to me to, to explain. 
and then I would just watch you work for a bit, and then I'd be like, oh God, no, don't do that. No, <laughs> do this. This makes, this makes more sense. But I think you, you now have a lot of stuff streamlined. Yes, and like I've gotten better, and I mean, you always go through and do a second pass to make sure I didn't mess things up or it looks good. You change things that I, I do not so good. You, you, for the editing portion of Mao Makes, Mao edits the video. I do one pass on it to help refine that video to the fi basically what the final version is going to be. The Mao goes back through it and starts doing punch-ins and dissolves and music. slide cards and music. Mm -hmm. And then I come in for another time and and sign off on everything and, and say, yeah, okay, that's good, or we need to change this or whatever. But um, I've gotten better. You have. I think, yeah, thanks. You have, you have gotten better. <laughs> Um, which is good, mm -hmm. which is which is really saves good. Saves you time. Because, because it saves me time. Um, but also, like, that's just the editing portion. I mean, you've done... The filming, like, I feel like I've gotten better in understanding about what I should say and when. Yeah, well, that's, that's one of the reasons why it's so important to edit your own videos. And this kind of goes for everyone. This is important. This is why it's important. I don't have time to edit Mal's videos anyway. But this is important. Uh, why it's important for Mal to edit her videos is because when she edits them, she can say, Oh, I said this, and I realize I, I meant to say this, or I, I left out a very key important thing. And that's something that she wouldn't realize if I was editing the videos. You know, by you editing them, you can go through and you're watching and you're saying, oh crap, next time I definitely need to make sure this is in there. And you kind of learn from that experience of cutting it together yourself about what needs to be in there. Other things like, for example, in this last one, there's a part where I have a chair next to me that I keep all my stuff on, and I have a washcloth to wipe off chalk. And I had it sitting on the back of the chair and you can see it in the shot. Mm -hmm. And now I know I can't do that and leave that there. Yeah, I mean, just a bunch of little things. You yeah. learn... And I'm sure you're learning this very quickly. I've been doing this for seven years, but you're learning very quickly how you look on camera. Like, whenever you're speaking, um, it's the, weird. the facial expressions that you make, um, you become more aware of them and what they feel like, and um, you get more familiar with like the muscles and stuff in, in order to create certain looks on your face. Kind of like what I'm doing right now. So You've always been good at looks, though. Like, your eyebrow raise. I've been good at looks. Do your eyebrow raise. Yeah. Can you smell what I am cooking? It is a rock. Oh. I'm sorry. Anyway, <laughs> um, I, I think we adequately answered answered that question. As far as the planning process, I know we're extending this question a little bit, but um, you got a lot better at, at the planning over time because um, you sketched... Yeah. In the beginning, Mal did not sketch, no. and uh, it was creating some problems because she would get cert she'd get pretty far into a painting, and then she wouldn't really know how it was how you yeah. meant to do things. Yeah, like I was like, oh, I never thought about this. And yes. and it drove me up the walls because I was like, Mallory, you've got to put more planning into the beginning of these things. So after I yelled enough, um, Mallory started sketching more, mm -hmm. and it has. It's, it's night and day difference between yeah. between not sketching and sketching. Yes. Like, Mal sketches it out on a pad before she ever goes into the room to start painting, to start doing anything. And she knows what her composition's going to be before she goes. There's some early ones where you're like, I've sketched out this or this or this. Yeah. But it's not like it is now. Yeah, now I'm doing, like, color pencils and... So you know exactly Refining. What Before I was just like, oh, it's kind of there. It also, it also speeds up the process a little bit because <laughs> then everything's a little streamlined. Yes. Anyway, uh, next question is from Kelsey Jeans. Day 2500 is approaching. Steven, what kind of process and time is involved in creating the fan favorites videos? Um, this is a good question because you're correct. It is approaching. By the time you guys get this video, hopefully it hasn't happened yet, but it will be happening very, very soon. I think, I think day 2500 is September 28th. And I really hope that I have this out before then. I probably, I think I will. I'm pretty sure I will. Um, yeah, it's a, uh, it it is a it's a long process because you have to go through so many videos. Historically, uh, 500 videos. There are 500 different videos, and people have been submitting moments. The way that I'm doing it this time is that um, people. I don't know if anyone even remembers. I released a. Uh, a form. There's a Google form that people have been submitting to ever since day 2000. 
and people are still using it today. I told them in a vlog a long time ago, I said, hey, bookmark this. Anytime something funny happens, click the bookmark, fill it out, and send it. And uh, we have thousands and thousands of submissions. And um, that helps streamline the process, but it's, it's still it's still difficult. I mean, you've got to take... It, think about the amount of time for, for one moment. So you read the list, and there's mm -hmm. something funny. You've got to go to that day. You've got to bring it into Final Cut, and you've got to pull that moment out. And then you have got to repeat that for every other moment on there. Yeah. And it takes a long time. Like, it, it takes one to two full days of just doing nothing but that. Uh, but the outcome's really great. And once you have all the, the moments in there, you can start going through and deciding which moments, like, eh, they're not as funny, and you can pull those out, and you try to get something very concise. It takes a while. Yeah. It definitely takes a while. As far as, like, day 2500 approaching, we actually, we're getting ready to change. This is the first I've ever talked about this, um, except on Patreon. I ran, I ran this idea by everyone on Patreon, and they loved it. It was overwhelmingly positive, so I'm excited to, to talk about it. Um, but the format for fan favorites is actually going to be changing, and I'm going to be talking about that soon. I'm going to be talking about that at the end of September, so don't be scared. It's a very positive change, and everyone, I think, is really going to enjoy it, because it makes a lot of sense. Um, but stay tuned for that, because we'll talk about that soon. The next question is from Jay Kirsten, and it says, Since we are in the marriage arc of Stephen Vlog, what's it like being one of the first married couples in your circle of friends, and what is it like watching your friends get married? So, for my circle of friends, I mean, we share friends, yeah. but for, for my circle of friends, the, the first people to get married that I knew, that I, I felt... You know, was a friend was I was close to was was Justin, uh, Justin and Laura got married and that happened when I was in college. Had the vlog started? No. Had it? I don't remember. Maybe. Maybe. I don't remember. No, no, no. I remember because it was uh, they got married May two thousand nine. I think. I think they got yeah May two thousand nine. Okay. Um, That's that nice. makes that makes sense because. They got married before the vlog began, by just a few months, and I was unable to go to their wedding because I was in, I was still in college and it was finals week, and their wedding was like on a Wednesday or something, and it was just not possible for me to go. Um, but they were the first people that I was like close to that got married. Um, but then I think it was us. I think so. I think so. Was there anyone that you knew personally that you were close to that? No. No, so so for you it yeah. was us also, mm -hmm. um, and it's it's really interesting because we got married. I mean, pretty young. Yeah, we actually did, and it's something that at the time I did not think we we did. I, re I really didn't. I was like, no, it seems fine. You know, I can see. I feel like I'm the yeah. age that I'm going to get married. You know, it wasn't. Um, looking back on it, I'm like, well, we were actually really young, um, but it never felt wrong. Yeah. You know, like it felt like. The natural evolution of um, yeah, it felt like we were at a good point in our relationship and where we were in life. To yeah, get married. It, it felt like the next step, and I felt ready to make that commitment. But so. now looking back, we we think we were kids. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I've actually um, you know, I've went back and watched that that video um from many many years ago, and I'm like, man, I we are young. We're very young. I mean, I I still feel in many ways that we are very young. <laughs> uh, but looking back, I was like, wow, we were really young. Anyway, uh, so how did it feel to, to be the first married couple? I mean, it was kind of nice because there wasn't like expectations like, oh, so-and-so's wedding was really great. Like, we got to make sure ours is, is good because they did this really good. We need to do that good too. Yeah. And um, ours was just kind of... Ours was so laid back. Yeah. Ours was just like, yeah, whatever. Like whatever. Um, and... And I liked that. Mm -hmm. I really enjoyed that. I liked that it was just kind of us doing our own thing, wearing sandals on the beach. <laughs> I really enjoyed that. Um, I mean, as, as far as uh, being the, the, the first married couple, there was a lot of people I remember, whenever you get married, there's so many people that are like, things are going to change. Things are going to change. And they don't. It didn't change at all. Um, but one of the things that I think people were concerned with, like some of our friends were concerned with, is like, you know, when you get married, you're never going to be able to hang out ever again. You know, you're going to be so busy and you're not going to have any time to do hang out with your buddies. And That's not because of me. Well, no, I'm just, I'm just saying know. that's like a general statement. I know. 
And what was I mean, it's kind of true. And what was so great was that, like, at least you know, for all of my friends, and, and honestly for all your friends too, like, everyone liked both of us. Mm-hmm. I, I think our interests were so similar that throughout all the, the, the time that we were dating, like when people came over, they didn't come over to hang out with me. They came over to hang out with us. There was never any any time that I did anything with anybody that Mal wasn't also a part of it. People came over to play video games, it was with us. People came over to play board games, it was with us. And if if you weren't around, people would ask where you were, you know, like, you know, is, you know, is Mal gonna join us? You know, I, you know, I want Mal to be there, you know, because we, yeah. Did similar stuff. I mean, it's certainly not like it's cer- that's certainly not the true fact in every single marriage and every single relationship. And there is not one perfect way to make a relationship work. But for what we have, it's it's been pretty great. Mm-hmm. I was saying like you know you're. It's not because of me that you can't hang out with your friends now. It's because we're busy. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, well, <laughs> both of us never do anything. I mean, we we are either here working like dogs, or we are. Out doing necessary things like getting food because we are out of food at home. Yeah, or we are, t- or we are somewhere. We're yeah. are in Indiana or in Japan or whether after working very hard like dogs. So that's our 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 life doesn't have our life doesn't curve very well. It's just a series of this. Like that's, that's kind of the way it is. Um, yeah. Did we answer this question? I think so. I think we just rambled a lot. Oh, what's it like watching your friends get married? It's nice to see them find someone mm-hmm. and, like, get married and be happy. Yeah, I mean, when you when you truly love someone, um, whether uh, romantic or, or friendship or whatever, uh, when you truly love someone, you really want the best for them. And when you see people legitimately happy, I mean, you... You, you really do share in that happiness, you know? Mm-hmm. So whenever you, you get to see your, your close buddies get married, it's, it, it's, it's nice. It's really nice. It's, um, it's a celebration. And I love food, so it's, uh, <laughs> it's a really great way to get, get some good food. Uh, the next question is from uh, Ballin Blastoise. <laughs> Isn't that a great username? <laughs> Ballin! Uh, what games do you both enjoy that have not been played on Steven Plays? There's two games I would love to put on Steven Plays someday. As a side note, one of those, one, a third game was Chulip because that a one, third game was Chulip because for years, I, I think people know this if they watch Chulip, I, we probably explain it. But um, Mal wanted to do Chulip on Steven Plays for years, and I was always like, I don't know about this. So what are the other two? You know them. Okage. Yes. Okage, Shadow King, uh, which is about a demon named Stan. Stan. And Stan, okay, so his name is Ari. Ari's the main character. And um, Ari needs to save his sister from a curse. And she's been cursed with Pig Latin. And what a way for a beautiful It's out to there. Grow up. It's really, it, it's, okay. So Okage, <laughs> I, I permitted Chulip to appear and it blew, it really blew my expectations out of the water for how it was received. It's a fun, very quirky, unique game and I'm glad that we could bring it to the internet. But it was also fairly short. Okage is long. Is it? It's long. It's like eight chapters. I'm it's pretty sure it's really bad. long. It's an RPG. But it's not like... The other one on my list, which is really long. That's the other reason we're not doing the other one on your list, even though it would be a really good game. Uh, the other game Matt wants to do is Dark Cloud 2, which is a game that I share feelings for because um, I actually played it also. Uh, and it's... It, it's I, I didn't beat it. It's really, I did. It's long. Almost. Um, but it's good. It's really good. But it's... I don't think it would be... For one, it's it's a little niche, which I guess it's hard for me to say that because Chulip did well. It's more well known than D- Okage, though. We okay. So at some point in the future, maybe Okage or Dark Cloud Two may or appear, both. or both. Uh, Dark Cloud Two is is really a fantastic game and it's fun, but it is um, it's a bit of a slog. The dungeon parts are long and lengthy, mm-hmm. and I feel like as far as making a let's play, it could be boring. It would have to be edited down. In, in major ways to be shown. Um, but, it, I mean, it's a good game. Yeah. It is a good game. And maybe Okage we could do. I don't know. I would have to look more into it. I mean, there's some dungeons in Okage, but they are nothing like Dark Cloud 2. Yeah. 
And I, think I remember. I remember I may Dark be Cloud wrong, Show. But I think Okage was re-released. Maybe? Yes, it was re-released on PS4. So it looks better. It was re-released on PS4, and Dark Cloud 2 was re-released on PS4. Okay, I wasn't 100% sure on Okage, but it has aged poorly on the PS2. Well, uh, wait... Dark Cloud 2 was re-released. I think Okage was yeah, also released. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I Pretty think it sure. was released. Pretty sure. Anyway. It has aged poorly on the PS2, though. So. So, yeah. At, at some point, maybe, we'll do those games. But they are, they're super niche. They're weird. Well, Okage's weird. Dark Cloud 2 is a legitimately good game, but it's it's lengthy. It's not for everyone. And my, my personal problem, the reason I don't bring games like that to the channel is that, um, I mean... We like to do whatever we want to do, and we do. We always choose what we want to do. But if you're going to commit to a game that is going to bring in low viewership, um, and that's okay, but we try to pair it with other things that are going to bring in you know, higher viewership. Um, but when you're doing a low viewership game, like if it's a long game, that's kind of bad. You don't want to do a game that's not going to bring in many views for a year. Like that's... That's the kind of thing I worry about. Um, you know, I, I want to make it clear that we always play what we want to play. Even when we're picking, like, a high viewership game, it's a game that we wanted to play. It's just we're trying to pair things up so it kind of evens out. Mm -hmm. But Chulip was a sleeper hit. I was not expecting people to enjoy uh, Chulip as much as they did, but maybe they, maybe Okage would surprise me. Um, oh, I never answered the stupid question. Yeah, do you have any? Um... I have one that comes to mind, and it may sh it may show up one day as a stream because I think it's a good stream game. I don't think it's a good LP game. Uh, Gauntlet, the Gauntlet series, uh, specifically Gauntlet Dark Legacy. Um, That's the one that was on GameCube, PS2, and yes, yes. Xbox One. Xbox. Xbox. Okay, yeah. Xbox that's original. The, Xbox. The, that's what I'm. Yeah, I know. The first Xbox. The first Xbox. <laughs> Um, yeah, I love I love the Gauntlet series. Um, I uh, got really into it with Legacy on N64, and then when Dark Legacy came out, Dark Legacy is the, the, the pinnacle of the Gauntlet series. We it's played, just so didn't good. We, we played. You and me? Yeah, we played. Okay. I don't I don't know if we beat it. I think we did. It's really long. It's very monotonous, but it's very very fun. It would be a good stream game. And it would be fun to play on stream. At some point, it's also four player, so it'd be it'd be a really ideal game to play with more people, especially when there's arguing and stuff. So, don't get my food. We might play it at some point in the future, just because I I really love that game. Another game that we've never I, I've done like some demo Fridays or first twenties of is the Worm series. I love the Worm series. It wouldn't make a great let's play, but maybe some sort of multiplayer video if if I could find another person who loves it as much as I do, who's also very competent, because the learning curve is stupid high, then I would bring some, some videos about it. Uh, next question is from Lucky Skarm. What is your biggest regret? I have two I can think of. Okay. Um, one is I wish I kind of would have, like, done more in college. Like, gone out, not to, like, parties, but, like, clubs and activities and you wish you would have done more with your college life? Yeah, because, I mean, I spent a lot of time, like, in my dorm with the people I knew playing video games, and, like, that, that sounds was kind familiar. of it. Um, like, there was, I was part of clubs, but, like, I didn't go to them all the time. I mean, personally, I wish I was a baller. I wish I was taller. I wish I had a girl. If I did, I would call her. Never mind. Um, I was gonna say taller. You are pretty tall. <laughs> kind of. You have a girl. It was a joke for a song no. from the '90s. My other regret is um, I didn't do so well my first year in college mm -hmm. because I was like, "This will be easy. I did. I could do nothing in high school, and it was fine." So I got to college, and I was like, eh, "I don't have to go to class. It'll be fine. I I got this. I can test. I test well. I." It hurt my grades, and that's my advice to everyone going to school for college. Go to class, because that was a mistake I made. It was really easy for me to go to class because SCAD had a policy. Yeah. SCAD had a policy that if you missed four days of any class, you failed it. Mm -hmm. Done. For every single class. And honestly, 
I, I really feel like that's a good policy, like, because it, it keeps you honest, it keeps you going to class, which you should be, because you're paying for it. And especially at SCAD, where it's like a bajillion dollars, you know, you should probably go to the classes. And it also made you think twice about getting sick. So frequently, there would be sick people in the class because, like, they had to be there. If they were, if they didn't go, they were, you know, in deep trouble. There was 20 classes a quarter, and you could miss up to a fifth of them. And if you missed your fourth or fifth class, whatever, whichever one it was, you failed the class. That was scary. It was definitely scary. Mm -hmm. um, as as far as my biggest regret, uh, I actually don't feel how how you feel, uh, how you felt, because like I I had the same experiences in college. Mm -hmm. A lot of people probably know if you've taken the journey and you've watched some of the old stuff. That was my life and I have no regrets about that whatsoever. Um, a lot of my college experience was spent playing video games with Taylor, Dan, and Alex in the dorm and getting and hanging out with Nick and getting our blood pressure checked at Sam's and like that. I was totally okay with that. That was, that, I have no regrets about that. I honestly feel like I had a better college experience than most people do, and that's that's my personal opinion. Um, my biggest regret is um, something that's largely out of my control anyway. Uh, it's just something that's always made me sad. If I think about it, I get really sad, uh, and it's that um, my my grandfather, my my mom's dad, uh, never got a chance to meet Mao. And it's, it's, it's not a, is that a regret? I don't know if it's a regret. It's, it's something that maybe, I, sometimes I let it run through my mind and I think, well, maybe you could have facilitated some way to, to get everyone to meet or something. But um, uh, when my grandfather passed, Mal and I had been dating for about a year and a half, something like that. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I, I talked about Mal all the time and my mom talked about Mal all the time to, to her dad. And uh, he was always asking about Mao and like when, when he was gonna get a chance to meet Mao and, and stuff like that. So it just, it really sucked uh, whenever, he, whenever he passed for a multitude of reasons, but one that really got me was like, oh my God, you know, Mao is never gonna get to meet him, holy crap. Um, so that's, that is bar none my mm -hmm. biggest regret. Like, and, it, and one, once again, it's not even something it's like my fault, you know, but it's something that makes me sad if yeah. I if I think about it. Anyway, um, next question is from Water Dagger. Did you ever get jealous the first year you were dating? Like, since we were in a long distance relationship, mm -hmm. was there ever a time where you felt? I mean, it was jealousy? not like you were hanging out with girls. <laughs> Are you saying that I didn't have any women friends in college, Mao? Is that what you're saying? Yes. You're right, but... <laughs> I mean, I'm sure there were a few little things where you were like, oh, I'm working on this project with Susie. I'd be like, I hate Susie. Susie's, you're working on a project with Susie. <gasps> ah! I mean, I'm sure I was also a little jealous of, like, Alex, because... Like, Who wouldn't be? <laughs> Um, because you were living with him and like you yeah no I, I actually no I, I can, no I completely agree I was comp I was I, I felt very jealous especially in the first year whenever our relationship was getting started I felt very jealous of of Steph mm -hmm. and then later on I felt very jealous of Haley because these were people who were like we're in close proximity you know like I could see yeah. them and sometimes sometimes you know you would get away from the camera and you'd be interacting with like Steph or later on Haley or whatever and I was like I want to interact you know I want to there. Um, and we'd be like, okay, we're gonna go to dinner now at Debo, and you'd be like, oh, shit, can go to dinner. Yeah, I mean, but that that's as close as it got. There was never between either of us. There was never any any like doubt. Like, I wonder if she's seeing someone like that. I never felt like that at all. I and mean, part of the reason is probably because we spent all of our time together. So there wouldn't have been any time for you to have seen anyone else. Um, yeah, I mean. That, that's a, that's about as much jealousy yeah. as I ever as I ever got. But uh, the next question is from Faye Nicole. What organizations were you part of in college? I'll let you go first for a few reasons. Um, at my first university, I'm pretty sure the only thing I was part of was um, Mystery Science Theater Club, which probably had some other name like organization or something. <laughs> Mystery Science Organization? Um, which is about the show Mystery Science Theater 3000 or MST3K. 
Um, someone who is now, I guess, a friend of mine ran it. He had like every episode on DVD. So every Thursday night, we'd go to the common room of his dorm, like in the lobby, mm-hmm. and he'd wheel out a TV and we would watch two episodes in a row. And we'd have snacks, and then afterwards we'd all go to the cafeteria and eat. So that's a, that's really cool. I'm still in contact with him. You've met Scott. Yeah, that's his name. Yeah. Um, actually, uh, he just invited me to a premiere in a movie theater of um, a new thing they have coming out for Rift Tracks. Mm. That was like live or something. Yeah. And it was going to be in Madison, Wisconsin, and obviously we didn't go because <laughs> we were busy. But but that's not the only thing you did in college. Oh well, that was pretty much it for Stevens Point. And yeah. then when I transferred, um, I went to um, Haley was in an improv group the year at, I lived at with Stout. her at yeah. Stout, and I went to see that a few times, and it was fun. Um, there was a gaming club group at mm-hmm. Stout, and I went to it a couple times. Um, but like everyone had these like built computers like these big pcs and i had my little macbook that couldn't do anything so like i went a few times but i was like i can't play anything everyone was having like a land party yeah and you had an underpowered macbook yeah and you could like barely play left for dead yeah yeah i remember that it sucked and like occasionally someone would like l- let you borrow, yeah, their someone let me borrow their computer and i played left for dead it's fun yeah um i also went to swing club Swing dancing club a few yeah, you times. You should clarify. <laughs> <laughs> Swing <The> dancing. Dance. <laughs> dancing like club. Like 50s dancing. Yeah. 1950s dancing. And um, that was fun because they taught us like aerials and tricks. Mm-hmm. And um, like I didn't have a partner because obviously you weren't there. But didn't I? I came one yeah. time. One was time it, you were was there. It, was it the swing club I it came was. to? Okay. Yeah. There was some. Um, I don't know if the vlog existed then. I feel like it did. Yeah, it did. It did it? It did. It must be really early. I, it must be a really early vlog. But yeah, I went and we danced and stuff. Mm-hmm. I remember that. But you didn't want to like throw me over your shoulder and Yeah, because me. I it was the first time I'd ever done it and I figured I would kill you. <laughs> yeah. It was probably a good oh. choice. But it was fun. We met in the old cafeteria at Stout, mm-hmm. which was kind of like a student center. And um, they had mats, like gymnastic mats. Mm-hmm. And like they taught us aerials. So, like, there was one time someone, like, threw me over their shoulder and, like, all of my ribs were bruised for two weeks. Uh, was it there was any other fun, though. Was there any other organizations that you were a part of that you can think I of? I tried to be part of the dance club team at Stout because it was, like, not an actual class. But, like, they had other students, like, teaching routine and then they did a performance at the end of the semester. But I didn't realize they wanted, like, a fee Oh, I remember that, yeah. they wanted kind of a lot more money than I felt like I could spend. I remember that, yep. Because I was going to do belly dancing, and then I was going to be part of the ballet point group, but they wanted, like, a certain amount of money per class, and I didn't want to pay for it. I remember (laughs) that. So I dropped out. I remember that. Was that everything? I think that was everything. You were part of a lot of stuff. You You know what just occurred to me? Huh. I understand why you were part of so many organizations and why you sought them out. It's because you were part of all of this other stuff in high school. Yeah. That's why. Yeah. So you were already in that groove of doing these extracurricular activities. So when you got to college, that just carried over. Yeah. That explains a lot for me. Because when I was in high school, I didn't do anything. Um, There was... They were always getting on my my case about coming out and playing basketball or or doing the yeah soccer whatever and and occasionally i would stay after school because i was on i was on yearbook and i have no problems boasting and saying that that i in in junior and senior year um i made the yearbook um also shout outs to justin who also co-made the yearbook we made the yearbook period no one else no one else uh in my entire school i was the only person that knew how to use photoshop so I taught Justin how to use Photoshop, and then we made the, the yearbook. There was a staff. I'm not saying that there wasn't other people. I'm just saying that we did all of the work. Um, so yeah, that, that was the only thing I ever did in, in high school. There was a lot of people that wanted me to come do other stuff, extracurricular stuff, and I just had no interest in that. I went home and made RPG Maker games and things like that and played played video games and and uh, learned how to to code websites and, and that was the kind of stuff I was interested in. I mean, did you go... When did you take guitar? Like, 
Guitar, that was, I mean, uh, yeah, okay, sure. I took guitar lessons. I started taking guitar lessons in middle school, actually. I started taking guitar lessons in middle school, but that was something that I didn't associate, that wasn't associated with school. Okay. And I think that's why. Okay. Um, it was something that happened, you know, on the weekends, and uh, I, I took guitar lessons for, for several years. Um, but when, because I didn't do anything with school, whenever I got to college, that desire was not there. There was no, never, never a point where I was like, I'm going to seek out organizations. Um, actually, uh, I just thought of something else. You can go. You can go first. I was going to say I did intramurals a little bit. Oh. I tried to do ultimate first beat, but I still had like this problem with asthma and breathing that actually may not have been asthma. I don't know. I haven't had an asthma attack in many years, mm -hmm. but um, I decided to try and play Ultimate Frisbee because Frisbee, cause someone tried to talk me into it, and I played like two games, and I was like, I can't do this. The thing I was going to say is that um, at the very beginning of SCAD, I don't know how they do it these days, but whenever we, we were at SCAD, um, during like the first week, you had certain things you had to do. You had to like go check in at places, and one of the places you had to go check in was their student center, which by the way was super cool because SCAD isn't a campus. SCAD just buys random buildings throughout downtown Savannah as they become available. So the campus is just downtown Savannah. So you don't know what the building's gonna be. The student center was an old Jewish synagogue. It still had stained glass really? in it. It was so freaking cool. If we get a chance to get back into Savannah. Is that where the art supplies are they sell? No. Oh, okay. So then no, I haven't that's been a, there. No, that's a completely okay. different place. So yeah, it was a Jewish synagogue. It was really, really awesome. Um, anyway, um, I remember whenever we went there, one of the things was like, check in for, you know, the organizations or whatever. Consider joining an organization. Um, I think one of the tasks was like, join one organization. And like the four of us went and we looked at everything and we were like, no, no, no thanks. I'm not going to do that. Um, I actually almost became a D&D player much earlier, though, because one of the things I had thought about in college briefly, the brief running thought was like, oh, you know, D&D is supposed to be a fun thing. I, we would probably really enjoy it. Maybe we should go, like, look into groups that play. But we never did. Um, the only thing that I ever remember doing as far as an organization is um, there was... Oh, wait, I never actually did it. <laughs> there was... The, the, the local gaming store in Savannah, Georgia is called Morningstar Games, assuming it's still there. The owner, his name is Jeff, he's a nice guy. Um, I would go there and I'd play Magic the Gathering, and um, that was where all the SCAD kids went to play, so it was always filled with, with pe people from SCAD. And then um, one of the, the RAs wanted to get together a group of people to, like, play Magic at college, you know, at the school, so we didn't have to go 20 minutes down the road to Morningstar, um, and everyone was already there, and uh, he, he was like, yeah, you have, like, training training decks or whatever, because I had some, like, stuff to teach people, and I was like, yeah, and I remember he sent me the invite for the event, and I just never went. But somehow in my mind, I had I, I had turned that into, like, yeah, we did this thing. Yeah, it was in an organization. But, but I actually wasn't. Yeah, I never did anything. No regrets, though. Really, I have no regrets related to that. I'm, it's 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 really okay. I'm I'm I don't have regrets about that, and I feel like I turned out okay, and I'm happy with with where I am now. So I guess it's all right. Follow up question that sure. I'm sure someone may be thinking. Okay. Maybe we've answered it in an old Q and A. Okay. Um, I'm sure someone might be thinking like, well, did you guys work in college? Oh yeah, yeah. Um, no. <laughs> Nope. I did. Nope. Um, there, I mean, there were some people at SCAD that, that worked, but um, the workload was very heavy because everything was about projects. It wasn't like you go to a class and you take notes and then occasionally there's a test. Like, for, for most everything, you were in some sort of art class and you had ongoing, like, big projects go, um, happening. Um, and SCAD is unique in that you don't go to class on Fridays. You only go to class Monday through Thursdays, which is awesome because you have three-day weekends, but um, most of the time you're spending those weekends working on projects. So for the people that did work, mad props, but I don't know. I really do not know how they did it. Um, the vlog is probably not a good indicator 
of things because mm -hmm. when the vlog starts, it's the end of junior year and then it shows the senior year. And like that was the easiest time I ever had in college because I did all the hard stuff at the beginning and got all the hard classes out of the way. My senior year is a breeze, but in those first few years, like it's it was really hard and there was a lot of work, so. But you, you. I had a lot of jobs. You um, had many jobs. The first year I worked at a cafe um, because I worked at Culver's and I was like, well, I have fast food experience, I could do this. Mm -hmm. And I was put in charge of closing and counting money. So I was kind of manager, but I did dishes too. And I cooked sometimes. Mm -hmm. It was weird. It was like a natural organic cafe with like vegetarian and vegan options. So it was kind of cool. Um, so I did that. The next year I worked front desk at the dorm, which was great because I could do my homework mm -hmm. and like stuff could hang out with me. Um, when I got to Stout, did I start with a job? No. At some point I picked up um, after school tutoring, like part of it was like helping kids with homework after school, like it's kind of free childcare um, with mm -hmm. a group. And then I also like did an after school club for the elementary school. So I'd bike down to the elementary school and um, one time we did like, I had a Japanese club and like we talked about like Japanese things and one week we fold our origami and the next week I would teach them some like basic words. Okay. Um, so that was that. Did I do anything else? I don't know. I had summer jobs. You did but... so much. You did, I mean, summer jobs don't count. I mean, okay. I um, actually, when I was in school, I did occasionally, and I wouldn't call it like a job, but occasionally I did some freelance work. Yeah. Um, there was people that either wanted, um, I did a few websites, I did a few videos, I did some graphic design. There's a few things I did over the years. Um, one, there was one notable thing that SCAD actually got for me, because SCAD does that, or they, they'll send out emails, they'll be like, hey, you're in this field, there's this company looking for this thing, and I actually made... Um, I worked with, I forget what the company was called, but it, it was, was an episode for a TV show, like an was, online. They, it was an online company that was doing, it was like, it was called like African television. And it was, it was basically, um, a group of people creating, uh, videos showing off like notable African American, like celebrities and stuff. And I did an episode for an NFL player. I can't remember his name. I can't remember anything else. Um, they fil basically they filmed it and then they sent me all the footage and I, I cut it together over the course of like a week or two. Um, and I think I did a f like a few other things for them, but that was like the notable thing was I cut that together. And I don't even know if that's anywhere on the internet. So if you wanted to see it, I couldn't even show it to you because I don't think it exists. Um, but yeah, that was all of the stuff. So much stuff. Um, this is a long Q and A. When it started, I was like, "This would be a really short one," and then, nah. Tangents. Tangents. Uh, the final question is from our good friend the Kublius, aka Haley, and she simply asks, "Why?" Z. Oh, I see what you did. I see you took the, you took a, it was a word, but then you turned it into the letter Y, which is a good letter. Yeah. Why can it's you know, in my name? Yeah, it's 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 in your name. It's not in your name. <laughs> it's not in my name, um, but it could be if I wanted to. Wanted it to be. It, it it can be shorthand for yes, like on a computer when you're typing on a terminal, you can just hit Y. Y. It means yes. Oh. Here's a fun. Here's a fun thing because we're already at 50 minutes. Can you do the alphabet backwards? No. Me and either. I'm sure if I was ever pulled over and they were like, "You need to take a field sobriety test," I'd be like, "Not the alphabet one. Not the alphabet one. Not the alphabet one." What's the alphabet one? Some. You know what a field sobriety test is, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Sometimes they make you say the alphabet backwards. Why? As Why would they do that? To make sure you're not drunk and driving. Yeah, but no one can do that. The, the only way you could do that is if you, like... Studied it and memorized it? Yeah. Z, Y... Z, Y, X, W, U, V... No. <laughs> no. V... No. V, U, T, S, R, Q, P, O, N, M... L. L. K, K, J... 
I H G F E D C B A. Is that all of them? I don't know. That was okay. See, I know which letters are at the end, in the beginning, in the middle, but like, I'm sure I'd like start going and then be like, well, S T U V O eight, and start doing them forwards. I think I got them, but I, I don't know. Anyway, uh, this has been a long one, and we hope that you had fun. If you have a question that you would like to ask, you can do so in the in the comments. That's why they're there. Ask a question in the comments. Do be sure, uh, before you ask a question, that you check in the link in the description. There's a little link that's like, hey, past questions. Check that, because your past question could have been asked in the past. And there's, there's probably little, an answer if it was. there's an answer for it. Um, try to ask something new, wonderful and interesting. Um, new, it's the new thing. That's it for this Q&A. Thanks for watching and we will see you next month at the beginning of October for another Q&A.